Shalom, everyone. In one of my prior videos, I mentioned that one phrase that has just been stricken from my vocabulary is, it can't get any worse. I've learned not to say that anymore, because it can get worse. 2020 sucked, pardon my language. 2021 sucked even harder. And 2022 appears to be saying, hold my beer. I started this year out with my second bout of COVID. Uh, but praise God, I'm okay now. I took a test last week and it turned up negative, so praise God for that. But I would like to say that that was the worst part of my year so far, but it wasn't. Lately, I have been made to feel like a burden, like an annoyance, like an inconvenience, just for merely existing. And that is not a good feeling to have. I have shed a lot of tears this week. I have to tell you that Psalm 46 was my mantra this week. And I highly encourage you to read it, if you haven't already, and go back to it when you need it. Now, praise God, I had brothers and sisters in Christ, including my wonderful wife, who genuinely cared about me. They encouraged me, and they interceded for me in prayer. And I am very grateful to God for them in my life, and I'm very grateful to them for encouraging me and for praying for me. Maybe you have experienced a week or a month or even a few years that just felt like they were overnight delivery from hell itself. Do you know what I mean? I'll bet you do. I'll bet most people have experienced a season like that. And thankfully the Bible is very accessible. The Bible talks about one person who had just such a season. His name was Job. In a short amount of time, Job experienced the death of his ten children. He experienced complete financial ruin, completely destitute. And then if that wasn't enough, he experienced the loss of his health. Job had three friends who heard about his troubles, and I want to quote what the Bible says about them, because this part gets overlooked a lot, and I'll talk a little bit about that later, but it comes from Job chapter 2, verses 11 to 13. When Job's three friends, Eliphaz the Temanite, Bildad the Shuhite, and Zophar the, Na the Naamathite, heard about all the troubles that had come upon him, meaning Job, they set out from their homes and met together by agreement to go and sympathize with him, meaning sympathize with Job, and comfort him. When they saw him from a distance, they could hardly recognize him. Job was in that bad a shape that he had physically become unrecognizable to his friends. They began to weep aloud, and they tore their robes and sprinkled dust on their heads. These were the rituals of mourning, as if someone had died. Then they sat on the ground with him for seven days and seven nights. No one said a word to him because they saw how great his suffering was. Now, if you have been a Christian for any length of time, you have probably heard probably more than one sermon about how terrible Job's friends were. You've probably heard about how 
Job's friends proceeded to lecture him about how Job must have been doing something wrong. How Job must have sinned. Otherwise, God would be blessing Job instead of cursing him. And Job's friend, friends kept encouraging him to confess whatever sin he was guilty of and seek God's forgiveness. His friends called Job arrogant and sinful because Job kept declaring his innocence. Job kept wanting to plead his case with God. Have you heard that before? I certainly have, multiple times. And yes, Job's friends were talking out of turn here. Job's friends, like Job himself, did not know what God was up to. But they acted as though they did. Job's friends claimed knowledge that they didn't really have. Does that sound familiar? I think we've all done that. And that has caused us to speak foolishly sometimes, right? Just like Job's friends. You see, in that respect, that negative respect, we're not that much different from Job's friends. But Job's friends were not all wrong. Look at that passage again. When Job's friends heard about what happened to him, they did three things. First, they set out from their homes. Secondly, they sat on the ground with him. They entered into his suffering. They came alongside of him. And number three, they did this for seven days and nights. So let me ask you a question. What if such a calamity happened to you? If you went through the deaths of your children, how many of your friends would call their boss and say, Boss, I'm not going to be in for at least the next week. Uh, take my PTO. I don't care. How many of your friends would tell their wife and kids, Look, uh, I got to go and comfort a friend. Um, I won't be back for a week, maybe more. How many of your friends would come to where you are and sit right on the cold, wet ground next to you and just cry with you for a solid week? How many friends of yours would do that? Three friends, like Job had? Maybe, maybe less than three? Maybe none? Job's friends may have spoken foolishly, but actions speak louder than words. You see, when Job was suffering, those three friends of his, those three friends that people love to criticize, they got off their butts and they did something. It cost them to do what they did. It cost them time. It cost them money. It was inconvenient for them. That is the love of a godly friend. That doesn't get mentioned a whole lot in most sermons I hear. So today, let us ask God to bring friends like that into our life. And more importantly, let's ask God to make us into that same kind of friend for others. Let's ask God to make us into the kind of friend that will love even when it is convenient, when it's inconvenient, when it costs us something. I want to thank you all for watching. Please remember to like, subscribe, comment, share, and support. Yes, I realize I'm asking a lot, but uh, be a friend, huh? Thanks again, and God bless you all.